Today's lesson is a big one. It's called the chain rule, and it is everywhere in calculus. We're going to be using this just about every day for the rest of the year. You'll find many, many times when I have to remind you uh, that you tried to take a derivative, but you forgot one tiny little thing because of the chain rule. So make sure you're always hyper aware of this. Keep it in the back of your mind, or even better, the front of your mind at all times. Okay, so what is the chain rule? It is how we find the derivative of a composite function, which is a fancy word for a function within a function, like f of g of x, the one we have here. The idea of a composite function, as you remember from Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc, is first you do what's on in the inside function, and you take the result of that and plug it into the outside function. When we take the derivative of that, we're actually going to go in the other direction. We're going to take the derivative of the outside function first, and then worry about the inside function. So here is the symbolic way we find the derivative of a composite function is this. which is great to memorize, but what you really need to know is the paragraph that describes what's happening. The derivative of a composite function is the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function times the derivative of the inside function. f prime of g of x times g prime of x and probably the most important part here to remember and to notice is that when we take the derivative outside function whatever the inside is from the original function shows up again exactly the same inside the derivative so in this case it's the 3x squared plus 5 is going to show up exactly the way it appears in h prime of x So we'll identify that the outside function here, what's happening to that inside 3x cubed plus 5, is it's being squared. That's the outside function. And the inside function is 3x cubed plus 5. So when we take the derivative of the composite function, of the whole thing put together, we have to take the derivative of the outside first. Well, the derivative of something being squared is 2 times that something to the first power. You can certainly write it to the first power if you want, but I'm not going to. And what's important, again, is that whatever goes inside this derivative is exactly the same as what we started with. It's that same 3x cubed plus 5, because the g of x shows up again. And then it's times, this is where we get to the times, the derivative of the inside function, that is, I'm trying to do a little bit of color coding here, times the derivative of that g, the derivative of 3x cubed plus 5 is 9x squared. And so that is our final derivative, 2 times 3x cubed plus 5 times 9x squared. Um, you certainly can multiply the 2 times the 9x squared. If you really wanted to, you could also distribute it, but you don't have to. We'll look at a couple of ex classic examples here. Um, and what I like about these examples is how they're so similar to each other when they start, but they end up being very different with the derivatives. Before we do them, though, you have to know that the, sine, the derivative of sine is cosine. We will see why tomorrow, but the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Fact to know. We're going to need to use that here. So we're going to find the derivative of each function. And notice the two functions look very similar, sine of x squared and sine squared of x. Remember, sine squared of x is also another way of saying the sine of x squared. They mean the same thing. We just use the notation where we put the exponent in first to avoid confusion. So sine of x squared and sine of x squared. We'll find their two derivatives. What I want you to do is to be able to highlight the inside function versus the outside function. So in this case, the outside function is the sine. The inside function 
is the x squared. It's the other way around in the other in the g of x. In that case, the outside function, what happens first, is the squared, and the inside function is the sine of x. So it does make a big difference. The order in which you do it, in which the composition that happens, makes a big difference in the derivative. So let's take the derivative of f of x, which of course I will label as such f prime of x. So I'm going to start with the derivative of the outside. So that's the derivative of the sine, so I'll do it in the same color as cosine. But remember what I said, whatever appears in here is going to have to appear inside again. Going back to the formula, that's the g of x and g of x appears the same way both times. So it's not just cosine of x, but it's the cosine of x squared. And then that gets multiplied times the derivative of the x squared. So it's cosine of x squared times 2x. And it's certainly OK to leave it like that, but you will very rarely see the 2x after the cosine. You will normally see it as 2x times the cosine of x squared. They're both correct. They're both equivalent to each other. This is just how you'll normally see it. On to the next one g prime of x, remember label what you're doing, don't call it f prime of x if we're talking about a function called g, derivative of the outside, this time the outside is the squared, so I'm going to have to take the derivative of something squared is 2 times that something to the first power, which again, you can leave that one there, but I'm not going to. And again, again, that inside, that sine of x, it's got to appear exactly the way you see it before we can multiply by its derivative, which is cosine of x. And so this part right here, this n that times cosine of x, that's the chain rule in action, times the derivative of the inside. That's the chain. So let me just write this out the way. Um, You'd see it, 2 sine x cosine x, which some of you might remember. It's really fine if you don't. But some of you might remember that that is actually equal to the sine of 2x. You learned that property in pre-calc. 